guys. Welcome in Hamburg. On Sunday is the marathon race. We prepared for it the last month. And yeah, today I arrived here with the plane. Yeah, actually I feel really, really well. Uh, last week I was tired, I would say, after a hard uh, two weeks of training. But now, after the tapering uh, period, uh, you saw the last episode. I am really relaxed now. And it's always a nice feeling before the race that your body feels completely good. Uh, in the morning, I had an easy run. I was 12K and I didn't uh, saw on my watch uh, and I was very surprised uh, that it felt that easy in the pace I did. Uh, also with a lot of elevation in it. So it means I feel very fresh and be ready uh, for the Sunday race. Okay, what are my goals for the marathon on Sunday? Since already in November, when I started with the marathon preparation for Hamburg, I had the goal in my mind. Nevertheless, it was not sure what the Olympic qualification time uh, was set from the World Athletics. But at the end, it was exactly the time uh, what, what I prepared for in November. It's a sub 208 what I plan for my marathon. Um, the Olympic qualification time for Paris is 208.10. So the planning is to go for the half marathon in 64 minutes and then I hope to run a negative split that I am a little bit more uh, down from the qualification time for the Olympics um, that I have a good chance uh, yeah, to already get a spot for the national team with uh, yeah, a lot of competitors in our country now and it's, it's, it's really uh, hard to qualify in Germany. The days before the marathon was filled with a lot of things for me as an athlete with this bit number one. I was uh, at the press conference some days before the race and then um, I was also at the expo and had some expert talk with Runners World. I was also at the booth of uh, Essex, my partner who are a big sponsor of this marathon race. So. It was a lot to do, but still uh, it was a relaxed time and it was amazing to see how interested the people are in me and my person. So it was nice days with nice people around. And then we had a talk, of course, with my coach and with my management about the race strategy and the pacers and the fueling strategy. Uh, of the race and also the technical meeting where we get our beep numbers and finally talked about uh, the paces uh, where each group get so my group was the second group uh, of the race so in the front a lot of guys <laughs> of course who, who rise uh, much faster than me but uh, me in the second group uh, with my three pacemakers I, I chose always nice to yeah to saw them for the race to negotiate how is the plan and yeah personally negotiate and not <laughs> never saw them before so that's really important that they know your face and your strategy that they're not going too fast or too slow that you really can trust them yeah, that was also the reason why I choose why I chose uh, David Nielsen from Sweden. He has a lot of experience. He's also with the same management and me. And I know that he raced before good marathons and also paced marathons. He had a lot of experience to guide uh, at the beginning my other uh, African paces from Somalia and from Kenya. So yeah, that I'm just a, a bit more protected and can focus on the the last part when I yeah, had to race alone. Yeah, the, the hotel and the expo was close, but it was uh, still a 1K to go, but I was just lazy and took the scooter uh, back and forth to just uh, relax my leg as much as possible. So where 
I found a, a chair. I just used the chair and not standing around. Um, that's the most important thing uh, to do really nothing. Um, the days before I did also really easy runs, a 10K in 430 pace and the 8K. So just to move a little bit the legs and circulation uh, the blood around um, that <laughs> the, the system is not completely sleeping but uh, really fresh for the margin race and yeah that uh, was all well so it's really good um, yeah the day before the marathon it's for me it's important to have dinner much earlier than than else also I went to bed at nine o'clock in the evening so that I have like eight, eight and a half hours of sleep. So um, yeah, I woke up at 5.30 and take my normal, I, I took my normal breakfast at, yeah, at 5.30 and then I walked like the last time in Barcelona half, 10-15 uh, minutes around the blocks Um yeah, listen to the conditions and yeah. There's the waiting line. Hello guys, it's yeah, uh, 7.30, we're going to the hall, uh, yeah, to the start line, we have, uh, we are really separated, we are here the pro athletes, uh, so 60 athletes uh, and 20 pacers and a lot of uh, Man coaches, <laughs> manager, and everyone. It's it's really really nice weather at the moment. So it's cold. It's it's perfect. And yeah, less wind. So hope that it stays like this. Um, yeah, my face is all here. So it's it's a good thing. So hope they stay by my side <laughs> very long. Um, yeah, I'm really happy to compete today. In Germany. To the start, the first thing you as a runner to want to finish the marathon, you try to find your pacers <laughs> at first. That's the reason why they wear the normal name in the front and the pacer on the back. And it's a really fun thing that a lot of pacers don't know that <laughs> and to put the pacers <laughs> on the front and the name in the back is always a funny thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, I would say after 1K, um, we finalize our procedure to found the group. It was a little bit hectic, I would say, um, but I said from the start that I will not uh, see on my own watch uh, our pace. I trust my pacers and um, that was also what I did uh, the, the whole uh, 30k where I was uh, 
guided from the paces but at the beginning um, yeah my my first pacer was David Nielsen so he was the leader of the paces of my three paces um, I have an, had another one um, from Kenya and another uh, from Ethiopia uh, the second guy was a really funny guy because he didn't know about his watch, how to use it. But um, yeah, we told him at the start he just should follow because you, as a runner you really feel it. And I would say he did also a really great job until um, till 28k. But um, yeah, what to say about the first 5k. Um, of course it's a little bit hectic. The start was not really fast. It was a really slow k. I think it was <laughs> almost the slowest k from the whole race uh, we went out in 307 um, i know it now because i checked my splits once at the website and also on my watch uh, but the first 5k there was uh, yeah southwest wind and the first 5k was really against the wind so that was the reason why the first 5k uh, went slow but in my opinion, uh, I didn't feel a difference between the first 5K and the second 5K. So from the start till the 5K, it was a 15.25 and from 5 till 10K, it was a 14.52. But the difference was that the second 5K was uh, completely the wind from the back and it was also downhill. So in my opinion, both uh, 5k felt really similar therefore I was surprised after the finish when I saw the splits um, but uh, I think yeah we did we did a good job because uh, also the next 5k was yeah the 15k was 45 30 so exactly what we wanted 15 10 pace we or two pace um, but what also is important um, every 5k is the fueling station and yeah for uh, the first 5k i was a little bit nervous if everything uh, running perfect is the bottle on the <laughs> on the bench and i was i had a really big advantage that my manager was allowed to take the bottle um yeah from the bench and give it to me directly by hand there were a lot of athletes in the race who had this support uh, from from bikers they went uh, to the fueling station, give the person a bottle. The good thing is you don't have to catch your bottle, you don't have to search about it. You can really focus uh, just to grab the bottle and take your drink as you train it in, in training. And I showed before, we, we trained a lot of it because uh, this marathon was a little bit different from the fueling. Um, it was the first race I used uh, really chills every 10K at 10, 20 and 30K. I used the, the chill um, to even get a little bit more uh, carbs in my body and there was also a caffeine uh, in it, in the gels. Um, that was uh, on the fueling side and that would, went really well. So ec uh, economically I, I didn't lost any time. Um, my body was stable, I had no problem at all with my stomach or with, with drinking during the race. So thanks again also to my partner and yeah, a marathon uh, <laughs> really starts uh, later. So the, the half marathon we passed in uh, 64.05, planned was 64.0, but it, it still was uh, in the range of the Olympic qualification 208.10. I would also say like after the half marathon there was uh, 1k uphill. Um, but for me, for my body, I really didn't feel that there was a hill. It was not a crazy uphill. It was a slightly uphill, but a very long. But other athletes, yeah, they told me different uh, stories that they, that they felt it really heavy. But I think that it's also, yeah, good that I trained a lot in, in the hills at home. Uh, I said to the organizer, every normal 12K easy run has more elevation than the whole marathon race. So I'm really fine with it. and. In my opinion, uh, it was yeah. It was also when when it, when we came to a small hill, I was always in the front, so I felt that I'm really really ready and, and in shape. And yeah, my running style felt felt great. The weather was uh, perfect, and for Hamburg uh, conditions, the wind was <laughs> not 
not there. Um, of course, uh, at, at the last part, uh, there was a little bit of wind, but uh, of course, if you're running alone, um, it's also a bit, a little bit because you struggle and then, of course, you complain about everything. But I would say it was a really perfect condition for Hamburg. Um, yeah. Then, uh, yeah, my the first pacemaker dropped out as planned as a half marathon. And yeah, after 28, a second a pacer went out, um, but he did a nice job. I, I always said also thank you because it's not, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really nice that, that you get, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, athletes uh, to su support you like that. The last pacer went out at, at 30k after the, also after the drinking station. Of course, um, we thought maybe that it's that's possible that that he will go a little bit longer. But mentally, I I was, um, yeah, my attitude was uh, that I can also go alone, um, as I did with my PB before, uh, two years ago already uh, in Siena with my 2.849, where I ran a really good negative split. Um, and that was also the reason uh, from 30 till 35 I had the fastest split from the 5k. It was a uh, 15 flat, so it was exactly three minutes pace. And so um, it showed me, yeah, of course I, I can still increase um, the pace. But yeah, a marathon is a marathon and starts after 35. And it, there was when the problem started, I had a little bit uh, problems with my 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 uh, foot uh, with my toes that they got a little bit swollen uh, yeah um, and of course you feel it here in the upper legs but nevertheless uh, it, it still was a nice uh, split time I didn't went too um, too slow it was a 15 19 so in total from all uh, 10 kilometer splits, it was really, really even. It was uh, like 30, 17, 30, 25, 30, 24, and uh, 30, uh, 19. So yeah, all between six, seven seconds, uh, I would say it was almost perfect. Of course, uh, the last uh, 5K, I wanted to run like also 50 minutes, then I, I would have a 20 seconds uh, better time. Uh, and then, yeah, Hamburg really started at kilometer 40 because from there till the finish, um, there is a little bit of a small ramp and in, and in incline. And what I always compare is uh, what I ran from 40 till the finish line and compared to the leaders uh, from the front, I, at the end I was uh, I was sixth place with the 2808, and the the winner ran exactly the same time 6:43 for an uphill uh, passage. I think it was really well um, because the winner had a 204, so he ran uh, four minutes exactly faster than me. And uh, when I didn't lost something in the last 2k. Uh, it, it meant a lot that I, yeah, I could uh, increase, but also the average from the last 2K was only 3.04, so really slow, but I would say if it, if it would flat, it would be a 3.0, and then, yeah, I would run on the 2.08. So um, what was uh, also very good in Hamburg was the crowd. Yeah, in a, in a press conference before the race, uh, it was uh, the other German, Haftung Welde, who said um, he wanted to be aggressive, he wanted to start with the first group, uh, but uh, they went a little bit too fast uh, out for the first half. He, he uh, went out in 62-33, so he was already one and a half minutes in front of me. And of course, uh, he is a competitor uh, for the Olympics, for me also, uh, but in Germany we have uh, three spots. He did till uh, yeah, 35 a really good job. Uh, after 30k, he was uh, already 1 minute 47 uh, in front of me. Between 35 and 40, there was some uh, spectators who told me, yeah, Hafton is only 30 seconds in front. And I passed him after 40.2, 40.5, I would say. Um, but yeah, for me, it, it was just, of course, this motivation when you're now the best German. Uh, but I, I saw always the car in front of me and the car had the time on it. And yeah, if you know, uh, yeah, 
I'm a controller, I know exactly that I need uh, like a 645 and I know what, what it means for the last part and when it's going uphill. Catch the guy, Richie, come on! Come on, Alfred! Alfred, you're holding this thing, come! Guys, first statement after the finish. I raced the 20808, exactly the Olympic standard. I beat it at two seconds uh, because I sprinted the last 200 like at the Europeans. It was thanks to the crowd from Germany again. Um, today, of course, I expected a little bit more, um, but I would say um, it, it, it's a good result. But I think uh, there's more to come. After the race now, some days later, I am really satisfied. I think it, it was not my, my, the perfect body and the perfect day for me to run, but I still um, did the time. Um, and always a PB is uh, time to say thank you to everyone uh, behind uh, me, my whole team. This is my coach, my manager, my wife, the family, my friends, all the training partners, everyone who uh, yeah, make that possible. Um, also, my competitors uh, who, who trained with me, uh, and we are only competitors in the race and in training. We are we are friends, and uh, and I'm really satisfied that that I am now uh, yeah one athlete who already has the qualification time. But it still uh, don't uh, mean that I'm 100% fixed uh, for Paris because the com competitors in Germany are really really good. It could be now I'm, I'm already qualified but it could be also happen that I have to run another marathon and have to run much faster. Um, we will see what, what, what the future is saying and then it's also depending about my season plan. If, if I run another marathon um, you, will, you will see it or if I can yeah, just uh, focus on the heavy course in, in Paris. Yeah, I want to say thank you also for your support to watching the episodes and comment. Uh, it was a pleasure. Yeah, I'm curious what the future is uh, telling me and we will see us soon. It doesn't matter where is it. Maybe we see us at the road race uh, or we see us at the latest in Paris. Yeah.